At the age of 15, my stepmother kicked me out. Well, a bunch of years later, here she comes, begging me to accept her back into my life, and I don't want to because of this one specific reason. This is a long, complicated story, and it's not over yet, but I thought I would come and tell my story as I've read a lot of other people's story about their crappy upbringing and thought that I would share mine. Everyone loves to revel in the misery of others, don't they? Also, it's like therapy. I get to write it down and no one knows who I am. Well, unless somebody I know well works out, it's me. But to be honest, at this point, I don't really care one way or the other. Anyways, the story starts a long time ago, so I'll give you the background first and then where I am right now. I think I'll be writing it all down. I'll, I'll also be able to clarify my thoughts going forward. I've always been the type of person who relies on lists and notebooks. I'm old-fashioned like that. Anyways, here we go. I'm 29, I'm male, and when I was around 10 years old, my biological mother decided that she wanted to have no responsibilities anymore, so one day she just packed her stuff and left. We had an RV that we used for family holidays, and one day she did not pick me up. I was at school, and my dad had to come and get me. When we got home, the RV and my mother were gone. All she left was a note saying that she hated being a mom and a wife. I've not seen her since. For a couple years, it was just me and my dad, and then he met Jessie when I was 12. She had two kids of her own, Jackson, who was 12 years old as well, and Grace, who was 10 at the time. At first, I thought it was great because I'd always been an only child, and now I would have siblings to play with, but the reality was very different. Right from the start, I thought that Jessie did not like me. She was not outwardly mean when my dad was dating her. She was just not interested. I thought that it was just because she did not know me, but as time passed, she grew colder and meaner towards me. My dad and Jessie got married a year later, and it went downhill from there. My dad, Paul, got a new job with his company, which meant that he was away from home for weeks at a time, but it was a lot more money, so it was worth it. That's when the abuse started. I always felt like Jessie treated me different to her kids, and I always had more chores to do, got less for my birthday and Christmas, and was punished for stupid little things. But once my dad started to work away, well, it just got even worse. I was never physically abused, always verbal, which is just as bad, and it eats away at your self-confidence, and I began to withdraw into my own little world. I've always been creative, and I lost myself in writing about worlds where I was not the unloved one. And I was involved in playing Dungeons and Dragons-style games with some people at school. Being able to disappear into a fantasy world really helped. However, my stepmom used to put me down. She would call me names, say I'm weird, but I would never amount to anything if I was playing these stupid games with such useless friends. I could not have anyone over at my house, so I spent as much time as I could out of the house, which looking back was the best thing that I could have done. I did not realize until the abuse came to a peak that my friend Isaac's parents were very aware of the crap I was getting at home, and they went out of their way to make me feel safe and welcome at their house. When my dad was home, Jessie was different. She put on this fake loving persona that my dad fell for the hook, line, and sinker. I tried to tell my dad when it was like when he was away with work, but he never believed me. My relationship with Jackson and Grace was strange, as I don't think they hated me like their mom did, but they were also scared of getting on her bad side, so they just avoided me. So she did not take her hatred of me out on them. Disaster was not far away, but I did not know what was coming. Three days before my 15th birthday, my father was killed in a car accident traveling for work and everything changed. I was devastated, and all I could think was that I've lost the one person who had always been there for me. I had no contact with my biological mother, and the only mother figure I had in my life hated me. I did not see much of Jessie in these days after my dad's demise, as she was out and playing the poor widow... But when she did come back, she had given up all the pretense of being nice. She'd storm into my bedroom and start throwing things at me, telling me to pack up my crap because she did not want me in her house. 
I admit I was angry and called her some pretty nasty names as I was still trying to process that my dad was gone. She told me that I was useless and would never be any good. She said that I would spend my life in a basement playing games with my pathetic friends and nobody would ever want me. She grabbed me, dragged me downstairs, and pushed me out the front door, throwing my clothes after me. I was a mess and just sat crying on the lawn until a neighbor found me and called my best friend's parents who came and picked me up. From the age of 15 up until going to university, I lived with my best friend and his parents. I went to university with their support and I've gone on to make myself a successful career. After university, my friend and I set up an online gaming community and sold games and dice. All the things my stepmother said would never make me anything and I'm now in a really good financial positioning. I have a fiance and we own a house of our own. I'm genuinely happy. Until last week when my past came back to haunt me. I was at work when I got an email from my stepmom. I was stunned and could not work out, but how she had gotten my email, but my friend pointed out that it was our business email. I mean, it's not very difficult to find, as we're in all the advertisements and gaming communities. In the email, she gave me pretty much her whole life story since I left. To read it, you would think that I would have been the one who left and abandoned the family, rather than what actually happened. After I was kicked out, my stepmom fought me tooth and nail to prevent me from getting anything from my father's will. But thankfully, I had my friend's parents who helped and supported me throughout it all, and I came away with enough to pay for university and support myself for a year or so. My friend's parents supported me in ways that they were not obligated to do, and once we became successful, I made sure I treated them to show how grateful I was. Between us, my friend and I paid off their mortgage and debt. Anyways, my stepmom told me a tale of woes. She said that once my father's money ran out, she was forced to sell my family home and move in with her kids. She always spent money as it were water. Now she was homeless and living in shelters and she wanted me to help her out. Just like that, out of the blue, she emailed me begging her to meet up with her as, you know, her own kid wants nothing to do with her. I immediately just wanted to delete the email. But my friend made me hesitate and said maybe she's changed, and I should at least hear her out. I don't think I owe her anything, and she can rot for all I care, but I don't know. Should I be the big person here and see what she has to say? Top comments from the original post. Comment number one. Heck no. Stick to your guns. She only wants something from you now that she's found out that you have made money and done well for yourself. She was an abuser all through your childhood, why would you want to let that back into your life? She sounds like she's one of life's takers. She used your dad as he was a good provider, wasted all his money after his death, and now she's broke. She wants your money. Don't let this woman back into your life. I mean, have you wondered why her own kids don't want anything to do with her? <laughs> they were not treated as badly as you were, and now they've even kicked her out like she did to you. To me, this just suggests that she has either treated her exactly like she treated you, or they are as bad as she is, and you don't owe any of them a penny. Comment number two. Maybe it's time to be the big person. Reach out a hand to someone in need. She's obviously in a better place if she's reaching out to someone who she knows does not like her. How would you feel in her place if you had no one at all to help you and your children had basically kicked you out of your own home? You would have to be a really heartless person to let somebody just suffer when you have the means to help them. How would you sleep at night knowing you let a helpless woman living on the streets just to prove a point that you do not like her? If you ask me, by deleting that email, you'll be just as bad, if not worse than she was when you were a child. Two wrongs do not make a right. I mean, think hard about what kind of person you want people to see you as. That's all I'm saying. Update number one, the rising action. Well, the responses to my first post were wild. A couple of them could have been written by Jesse herself. I was going to ignore those, but I can't help myself. I do not owe that woman anything. And whilst I'm not a cold-hearted person, I don't see how I should be held responsible for her and any bad choices that she's made in her life. 
If it was not for the fact that my best friend had the best parents in the world when I was 15, I could have ended up on the streets and it's only through the love of my friend's parents, Ben and Fiona, that I did not end up another lost child with no means to make a good future for myself. I call them mom and dad and have done so since I was a teenager. I owe Jesse nothing. However, one comment really caught my attention and I've been thinking about it for days now. Somebody asked why would her kids have kicked her out? Had she done something equally awful to them or were they just as greedy and bad as she was? It had been going round and round in my head for days and when my girlfriend Hannah said maybe I should have a look into where they were and what they were doing, it would maybe stop my brain from going around in circles constantly, which is what it's doing at the moment. It did not take very long to find them. They still live in the same town we grew up in, and I was able to find contact numbers for both Jackson and Grace. I have to admit that I was really hesitant to contact them when I was worried. I would be bringing a whole new level of drama into my life that I did not need. However, Hannah and Isaac both pointed out that I have never been able to let things go without looking for an answer. I would just go over and over them in my head until I got a solution that I was happy with. I guess it's a bit of a character flaw in myself. Anyways, after about a week, I took a deep breath and just messaged Jackson explaining who I was and asking if we could talk as his mother had been in contact with me and I was confused as to why she would be contacting me when she hated me so much. I didn't know if he would reply, as I've not seen or spoken to him since that night when I was thrown out of the house. I decided not to reply to Jesse until I've given Jackson time to reply to my message, and then I could see how things were and what was really going on. It did not take long. I received a phone call within three hours of me sending the message, and whilst I was nervous to speak to Jackson, I was glad that I've done so. The first thing he did was apologize for everything when they were kids and say that he was wondering about contacting me before but was worried that I would be too angry to talk to or think that he was trying to use me for money. He asked me if I would be willing to meet Grace and himself for lunch so we could talk properly. I agreed to do it as I was curious but said I would be bringing friends for my own peace of mind. He was totally okay with it and we arranged a date. There is a lot that I've learned that day, and it's too much to write here. The basic facts are that after I've left, his mom turned her anger against him and Grace, and she's no longer having me as her punching bag. Eventually, her behavior got worse and worse, and so... Uh, feeling that they had no choice, they both left home and did not look back. My stepmom had burnt through all the cash that she had and started begging off her kids. At first they helped her, but she got more aggressive and they stopped all financial help. Jackson owned the house that she was living in and he evicted her, so she was forced to find other accommodations, which she constantly got evicted from due to behavior and lack of payment. Now, she's turning to me in pure desperation, and I've decided that right there and then I would not be helping her and emailed her back that evening. It was the right decision to make. Update number two, the retaliation. I thought this was over. I did. But I think you can probably guess this isn't as I'm writing another update. <laughs> I sent the email to Jesse when I got home from my meeting with Jackson and Grace, who were really apologetic for everything when we were kids. However, now I'm older, I can see that there was nothing they could have done to stop what happened to me. They were just kids themselves, and we've been in contact ever since that day, and we've realized that we actually have a lot in common. Isaac came with me, and he's also really like them, so if nothing else, I have developed a new relationship and friendship. That's the positive outlook news, and here comes the nightmare that followed. Jessie did not take the news that I would not be helping her well at all. She sent me another round of emails a few days later that was just rambling messes of insults and demands. I spoke to Jackson later that day, and he said that he believed that his mother had turned to drink and illegal substances now that she was homeless, and as a result, she was even more unreasonable than normal. He had also had some pretty awful emails and messages left on his phone. I had no idea how she found out where I live or where my work offices are, and I have to admit, 
At first, I was worried that Jackson and Grace had been lying and betrayed me to their mom, but they were horrified as me at what she did, so I honestly believe that they're innocent. In the early hours of a morning, Hannah and I were woken up by the sound of broken glass and going downstairs, I found a brick had been thrown through the window of our living room. There was glass everywhere and a really awful smell. Well, it turned out that a bottle of urine had also been thrown into my house and there was no one to be seen and as we had no cameras when the police arrived, they said that there was not much that we could do, although I suspected Jesse, huh, but there was no proof. I showed them all the emails begging for money and explained my past history with Jesse, but they said that there was not enough proof to do anything about it as it's most likely just a random person who liked to be destructive of people's property. I was not convinced, but there was nothing I could do. I was up all night as we had to get the windows boarded up and carpet cleaned of glass and urine. Hannah was understandably upset and distressed, and so once we were sure that the house was secure, I called Isaac's parents and we all went and spent the rest of the night at their house. I did not sleep at all and I could do was just sit and think that if I had not answered that email or if I have given her money, she would not be targeting us. Isaac said it was wrong to blame myself as we did not know for sure if it was her. And if I'd given her my money, it would have been the start of her asking me for money all the time. I know he's right, but I don't want to live in fear of her like I did as a child. I decided I was going to grab the bull by the horns and speak to her. I'll tell her I know it was her and if anything happens again, I'll find a way to prove it was her and she'll pay for what she's done. I'll be putting up cameras at home and at work and I will not live in fear, not again. Update number three, the comeback. I realized how angry and unhinged I may have sounded in the last update, but to be fair, I was angry. I have a few messages saying that I should just not do anything that could be used against me and would get me in trouble and I know that I have to be careful but everything I've put behind me from childhood has been triggered and I'm struggling. I messed up and I messed up badly. The fact that I'm able to write this and that I'm not sitting in a jail cell is thanks to my amazing friends and family who have helped me out with my character statements and proof that Jesse terrorized me as a child. Following the attack of my house, I found that there was a ton of bad reviews posted on our products. I was getting emails from different addresses and abusive phone calls from untraceable numbers threatening me and Hannah. I knew that voice I had heard it many times before telling me I was useless and would not amount to anything, so I went looking for her. I knew she was living in a homeless shelter in town, and so I went and wandered the streets until I found her. She looked like hell. She was always really glamorous when I was young, mainly because she spent all my dad's money, but now, now she looked old and she was drunk when I finally found her. At first, she did not recognize me, which is not great considering she's trying to get money from me. I approached her and said that I was who I was and that she had to stop her behavior. No matter what she did, she would not be receiving a dollar from me, not ever. Now, this is where I messed up. As I looked at her, I should have realized that she was not, well, and this on her own. She could barely stand up, and as I was talking, a guy came over and started getting in my face, asking me what I was doing talking to her. I told him it's none of his damn business. It's between me and Jesse. That was when he realized who I was, and I realized that he was a part of the whole thing. He looked at me and then at Jesse and smirked like she used to when I was a child. He asked her if she, well... If I was the rich dude? And she nodded. That's when he leaned in and said that if I did not want my house to burn to the ground with me inside of it, I would give them the money that Jesse asked for as the brick was just a warning. Uh, which was apparently uh, given to me, but I was too stupid to understand it. I was so angry and all the rage from my childhood came out and I hit him. I started a brawl. With Jesse joining in, and I'm not sure who called the police, but the next thing I knew, I was in a jail cell, waiting for Isaac to bail me out. I know, I know, I messed up. I was angry. I have to go to court now, and it would appear that Jesse may have messed up my life yet again. Update number four, the revenge. The last five months have been awful. 
I've been treading on eggshells, constantly waiting for the court date to come up. No one has said it, but I'm 100% sure that Hannah, Isaac, and his parents are all disappointed in me that I let her get me this way. It made the news, and so my business took a slight hit. Not as bad as it could have been, but I felt so bad that Isaac would be at risk of suffering because I lost my temper. I was released on bail, and I had to stay as far away from Jesse and her bloke as possible. His name was Johnny or something like that, and no idea if this was his real name. I've been talking to my lawyer and we're putting together all the evidence we have of what Jesse and her man were doing to be trying to show. That's what happened was just out of character for me and a result of undealt with childhood trauma that, well, the threats demanded my money triggering all of the trauma. When you look at it, there's quite a lot of evidence to support that and Jesse was not careful when leaving voice messages and from the thing that, that she says, it's very clear that it's her. We still, however, could not prove that the attack on my house was her doing it, and it was only my word against theirs. And they threatened to burn me alive in my own house, until it wasn't. Grace became my survivor, and my savior. Well, Grace and Isaac have been spending a lot of time together. Grace went to see her mom on the pretense that she was angry that I attacked her mother, and pretended to, well, want to help. She met Jesse and asked her what had happened. Grace pretended that she was sorry for kicking her mom out and was very convincing. Grace recorded the whole thing while Isaac sat not too far away to protect her. Jesse was drunk again and admitted everything to Grace, thinking that she was talking to somebody who understood. Jesse admitted to the emails and she admitted her friend had thrown the brick and urine through the window and she laughed as she told Grace how her friend had told me that he would burn my house down if I did not pay them off and provoked me into a fight. Grace just smiled sweetly and left and the recording is now with my lawyer. He thinks we have a good chance to get the charges dropped for me and we can prove that Jesse was blackmailing me. The final blow for them came when I got into work one morning and there was a message left for me smeared over the front windows. I'm not going to be graphic, but I'll say I hoped it came from an animal and not a human. Ugh, those idiots then left a message on my work phone saying next time it would be me if I didn't pay them $10,000 by the end of the week. So yeah, that was my adventure into being arrested. Well, the charges were dropped, but... I did have to undertake counseling for my past. Jessie and her friend Johnny were arrested that day, and I've never felt so relieved in my life. It's the early days, yet I'm just hoping that this time they'll not get bailed out. Or I may have to go into hiding. Update number five. The aftermath. It's over. Finally, it's over. Everything's finished, and... I would not have to spend time always looking over my shoulder or wondering when the next brick will come through my window. The trial was pretty rough as they pleaded not guilty, which meant that I had to go in as a witness. But I was not alone. Isaac, his parents, Hannah, and to my surprise, Jackson and Grace all gave testimonies about, well, how things have been. Throughout it all, Jessie had smirked, and it was obvious that she did not care one bit for me or for her biological children. I think that hurt Jackson and Grace, even though they had already cut ties with her, and it was the final severing of their relationship with her mom. I don't want to dwell on the past anymore, and all I'll say about things now is that both Jesse and Johnny were sent to prison. It turned out that they were already had warrants against them for other things, and so they got pretty decent sentences. From my perspective, probably not from theirs. Everything else is positive. Hannah and I are getting married in eight months, and we finally set a date. We decided to move to the house so that our marriage was not tainted by the memory of the assault on our old home. Isaac will be my main man, and Jackson's going to be a groomsman. Hannah has asked Grace to be one of her bridesmaids, and my relationship with Jackson and Grace is amazing. They're really good people, and I'm glad that something positive has come for me as I have a new family. Just to add to Hannah, Isaac, and his parents. Well, it was no real shock when Grace and Isaac announced that they're dating, and so for us, it was a new start. We released a statement from our business, and people have been really supportive. It turns out a lot of people know how it feels just to have abusive family past. Jackson's working with us now as well. He's an incredible voice actor. 
So yeah, from something awful came something great. Life has a funny way of doing that. This is me now, and I'll not be updating this again. Look after each other out there, guys. Thank you. Top comments from the update. Comment number one says this. Wow, that was a roller coaster of a ride. I've been here since the beginning, and I totally understand why you punched that dude in the face. I would have done exactly that if I were in your position. I'm so lucky that I've never had to deal with family issues like this, and I'll hug my family tight and be grateful that even though we annoy the heck out of each other, it's always just over stupid stuff like whose turn it is to take out the trash. Well, good luck with everything, OP. Live happily with your wife-to-be and your new family. I'm really glad that you did not get in trouble for simply defending yourself. I guess I should say violence is never the answer, but they were threatening you and your girlfriend. Good riddance to them both. I hope they rot in jail. Comment number two. Wow. Okay, could you be any more sickening? Seriously, you're an idiot. Oh, look at me. My life is perfect and I'm really rich and everything went my way. Whoopity bloopity blue blop. I have a perfect relationship with everyone, and I've never done anything wrong. Look at me, punching people in the street and getting away with it because I'm rich and they were poor and drunk street people. Get over yourself, OP. Not everybody lives in this fairy tale like you seem to. You should have been charged with assault. You hit a dude. But of course, that's how life works, isn't it? The wealthy get to do whatever the heck they want and get away with it. I truly hope you have a miserable life. All right, so now that we know what happened at Jesse's trial, I want to know your thoughts about this story, guys. Let me know in detail in the comment section down below. Say, for instance, you were in OP's position, a 29-year-old man, and you just had to figure out what to do. Let me know. Do you follow the same uh, footprints that OP went in this story, or do you change it up a bit? I want to know your thoughts. Guys, my name's Mr. Redito. Thank you for joining me on today's story. I hope you enjoyed it, and if you want more daily videos, all you have to do is hit that subscribe button. I'll see you guys in the next one, and remember, it's cool to be kind. Peace.